What is up YouTube? My name is Eben and I haven't brought you anything in a little while, but that's okay because I'm bringing you something really good. Tried, tested, uh, from Dallas Regionals. This is actually from the Day 2 event, the League Cup, which is, you know, League Challenge, but it's a League Cup because we're League Cups now. And uh, this deck, I put it together kind of looking at the meta, and uh, I came in 7th out of an event with uh, a little over 100 people in it, so not, not too bad. And the deck is Sceptile. I put it together uh, the day before. Once again, I was kind of looking at the meta, and I wanted something simple, aggressive, and that could exploit uh, the low energy counts and especially the special energy dependency of the format. Uh, just something with a lot of uh, offensive pressure and good tempo. Uh, Sceptile here, uh, for those of you who've forgotten what he does, he's got 170 HP. We're not going to Mega Evolve him. We're just going to take advantage of the old, the original, the normal, just the regular Sceptile EX. And he goes one grass, one colorless for 60 damage, but if your opponent's active Pokemon is affected by a special condition, it does 70 more damage. We're going to combine this with his old partner in crime, which is Ariados, from, also from Ancient Origins. Uh, just a regular old stage one, nothing too complicated here. That's going to want to sit on your bench with his 70 HP and just stare at your opponent. His poisonous nest poisons both active Pokemon. Hey, that could be good for Unseen Claw, right? But it doesn't poison grass Pokemon. So basically, since there's not really much of anything else in the format that's getting played right now that's grass type, that means you can poison pretty much anything on the other side uh, in the current meta, but you won't be poisoning your own Sceptile, which is awesome. And uh, you do actually have the ability to use his attack in this deck, his impound, which, you know, I guess that could be nice. If somebody's poisoned, you can keep him from retreating. Uh, yeah, that's all right. But mostly, we're going to just, uh, if he gets called into the active slaughter something and not knocked out, he only retreats for one. So that's nice and easy. So with three of them, we should be able to get him up early. Uh, theoretically, turn one, you get a spinner act down, one of these guys. I mean, we do have string shot to potentially uh, paralyze somebody and buy ourselves a turn if things get really ugly. But... Uh, 3-3 three, three line here. The basic idea is turn one, you get a Sceptile into the active slot, you get a Grass Energy on it, and you have a Spinarak on your bench. Next turn, you get a second Energy here, and you evolve up to Ariados. It's that simple, and you deal, you poison them, you're going to deal 130 here, and then they're going to get poison between turns, which is 140. If you've got a Fighting Fury Belt here, that's 150 on your second turn, which could easily be your first attacking turn. That's pretty heavy pressure. Uh, liberal use of cards like, uh, well, Liberal, but uh, well-timed use of cards like Lysander can turn that into uh, a lot of prizes, too. So definitely something we want to exploit. We do have one more EX we've run, and that's one copy of Beedrill EX. Um, largely because Garbodor is kind of a thing, and stopping him, well, there's not a lot that can stop him. But Beedrill EX's double scrapper is an excellent way to do it. This is just something we can kind of fetch our one-up from the deck, because honestly... A lot of people still don't see this coming, even though this card uh, was kind of spiking at the event. Uh, it jumped up from somewhere under $10 at the beginning of the first day, and it was at 18 last time I checked it on the second day. So, I mean, the card really jumped quite a bit that day at the event, and uh, they, they sold out of it real quick, just to give you an idea. I'm not sure what it's at, like, as of when I'm filming this, but suffice it to say, if you've got this guy, you might want to hang on to him, because uh, his Double Scrapper is one of the few answers to tools, uh, because they tend to play out their tools pretty quickly, and so if your Beedrill EX comes out and Double Scrappers even once, it might mean that their Garbodors are permanently shut down. And uh, even if you can knock out a Garbodor and they might be able to build up another one, they may or may not have another tool to attach to it. Um, so, and this guy does have 160 HP, so he probably won't necessarily be getting KO'd back, which is nice. And we can use his Pin Missile. It does an average of 80 damage, which isn't too shabby. And uh, our support engine, the rest of our Pokemon, we're running uh, one Hoopa EX and two Shaman EXs just to kind of uh, search up. Obviously, we'll try to play Hoopa on turn one, get like a couple of extra Sceptiles, and maybe our Beedrill if we need it. Uh, kind of depends there. And obviously, we're going to probably pull up one Shaman, do some card drawing, try to aggress through our deck, make sure we set up our ideal turn one situation, which is that Sceptile and trying to get to that Ariados on our second turn and just swing every turn for that super heavy damage. Now that's our uh, Pokemon base, it's 14 Mons, and like I say, our theme of the deck is aggression and exploiting uh, energy vulnerability in decks too. So our supporters are, we're running four Sycamores and three Ends, which is a pretty standard draw support uh, core right now. And we're running the double Lysanders because we want to be aggressive, like I say. So uh, the double Lysander is very good because it makes sure we can always call up the right thing to hit it hard 
and pick up two hit KOs on things we want to with our opponents not being able to just retreat out of it because there's no AZ anymore, of course. Um, we're also opting for one Olympia. Everything in the deck has a one energy retreat, which is really, really nice because it makes it easy for us to get away. But sometimes you ne do need that option to just basically get out for free or on the odd chance you get status or something like that. So it's a really good option to have and the healing can sometimes matter. And I did opt in uh, the build I ran to run one delinquent because we're running a lot of hammers. And so we can force our opponents to play their hands out pretty aggressively just to try to keep up with us and uh, keep you know, maintain pace of the game. So Delinquent is a great way to exploit that. Plus, since we're running the Hoopa Shaman engine to get ourselves set up, um, Parallel City is what is our stadium of choice. And this way we can exploit that Parallel City after we've uh, used it because basically the second we play it, we don't, you know, we're not really using it anymore. And this can get rid of other Parallel Cities too. So pretty utilitarian supporter there. Um, works out pretty good so that's 11 supporters there and as far as our items we've got four via seekers uh that's going to be part of our 444 core uh of just sort of the standard cards you just you pretty much run four of in most decks just four seekers four ultra balls because the ultra ball gets everything from spinner act to septile and we're running four trainers males as well just to kind of keep that uh you know make sure we get the draw support as early as much as we can and also hit those utility cards when we need them mid to late in the game and our parallel city that i mentioned we're running three of it and it's basically just to make sure that we can get that hoop and that shaman off the board as quickly as possible um and of course we don't want to play the uh, the city side of it toward ourselves because it will actually uh, decrease our damage we can play it toward our opponents and that does actually affect um, a number of decks by decreasing their output. Uh, things like uh, Greninja and even Volcanion, although I will be honest with you, Volcanion was the only deck that uh, I lost to at the whole event with this. Uh, it was Volcanion because it's just a nightmare matchup. It's kind of your one bad matchup. Um, but honestly, it, it, has, it struggles in a lot of its matchups too, so you don't necessarily pair against a whole lot. So I played it twice, lost to it twice, and one of those games I probably would have been able to win, except I prized two out of my three Aridos. So I was having a lot of, I was having a real hard time finding it. Um, so not being able to get that tempo, not being able to squeeze the full damage out of my Sceptile in that game had a lot to do with me losing that one. So I probably would have just had one loss if it weren't for that. But anyway, uh, you know, it happens. We're running three Fighting Fury Belt because honestly, we're only going to get up three Sceptiles by the time those three Sceptiles get knocked out. That's six prizes anyway, right? So just three, that's really all we need. And that makes room for a lot of our removal. We're running three Enhanced Hammers. Some people are teching one, but that's kind of inconsistent. Uh, in a lot of the decks I saw at Dallas Regionals were running two Enhanced Hammers, uh, which is pretty cool. But honestly, the decks it hits, the full three are very useful. Almost every deck, with once again the exception, ironically, of Volcanion, runs Special Energy. Yeah, even decks like Greninja run Special Energies because they run that Splash Energy. And denying them the ability to bring back those frogs by getting rid of that Splash Energy before you knock it out does matter a lot. So these are very powerful. This allowed me to have a huge edge over things like Giratina and Yvel Tali X and so on. Um, and anything running Double Dragon, obviously, just uh, feared the card. But I'm also running four Crushing Hammers to really hit home. This can pick off things like those Crucial Dark Energies or the handful of basic energies most decks run. Most decks have a very low energy count, of course, which means that these Crushing Hammers only hitting about half of them on average statistically still means you have a pretty good amount of energy removal here. And this also lets you uh, have just one more way to pull off those DCEs uh, because most decks will run that one special charge. And we do have the one super rod just to kind of bring things back in case we need to cycle back from like early sycamores and stuff like that to ensure that we keep an Aridos up throughout the game and Sceptile and stuff like that. Um, and if we have to burn a Beedrill and find out we need it, maybe... Um, but more than anything, I kind of used it to get to get back those grass energies early on so I didn't have to fight too hard to conserve them. And that's it, really, there. That's the item base. Well, items and stadiums, technically, but, uh, you know, details, details. Finally, we're just running all basic energies. So we are invulnerable to the enhanced hammers ourselves, and virtually no one was running cra crushing hammers. So our energies were on for keeps, which is really nice. And we were running nine. That was enough that I found I was I was able to very comfortably hit my energies anytime I needed to. I never really had too many, and I um, I virtually never missed an energy drop almost ever. Um, I think once or twice, and I'd prize like two to three of them in those matches. But I mean, honestly, it was it was really kind of the ideal energy curve. I was thinking about running a tenth, but I'm really glad I didn't. Um, so that is the deck. 
it's simple. It's really powerful. I think I might have made some mods uh, if I'd been able to test it a little bit more, but honestly, it's a real sleeper of a deck. It's very powerful. If you have a chance to play it at like a League Cup or something local to you, uh, especially if you're not expecting to see Volcanion, it is very much a deck that you should try out. It's very powerful. Uh, fiddle with it a little bit. You might be able to drop the Crushing Hammers, truth be known, depending on how much you think you need them. And you can uh, sub in various things. You might even be able to sub in like a Weakness Policy or a couple of other things to kind of help your Volcanion matchup if you do expect to run into one or two of those. Um, there are definitely tweaks you can make. So I'll leave that up to you. Um, like I say, there are a lot of directions you can kind of go with it, but it's, it's really effective the way it is. It's worth a try. And so anyway, until next time, like, comment, subscribe, check me out on Twitter if you want, and I will see you next time.